Hi guys, Reaper here. Thanks for tuning in to watch another one of my videos. Here to talk to you today about the Cyclone, how you can use it since we've had the big patch and update, what you can do with this ship for PvE specifically, what some of the new missions look like, and to learn about how to be effective in PvE missions using missiles post rapid nerf without people losing too much speed or or too much ability i think that the torpedo boost has been a welcome change and as you can see here from my ship fitting i'm at 835 dps i've opted to go for a split damage system i've gone for four torpedo launchers which we can see here are the pitham c type medium torpedo launchers pretty cheap on the market or at least they were before the patch they might start to go back up again good time to grab one I'm finding that the torpedo launchers coupled with the target painter seem to be hitting cruisers upward very effectively. The reason I've got the split damage system here is the rapid medium still apply DPS to frigates really well. However, they have been nerfed a lot in damage and also in range. So to deal with the pesky frigates, I've got those two launchers and got the Mark 7 target painter here. Probably will upgrade to one of the named ones eventually. Couple of Nosferatus which haven't changed. I'm still cap stable using the two Nosferatus instead of the three enabling me to use the target painter as I just mentioned and for my drone I have a Mark 7 infiltrator mainly just because they're cheaper arguably the Valkyrie would be the better choice with its speed I have a medium Gistum C-type booster which is boosting 627 shield every five seconds I have a Centum C-type afterburner getting my space speed up to over 700 meters a second. For some missions, you may even need to use a micro warp drive now. A couple of uh, cheaper adaptive and vulnerability fields, and I have a high meta ballistic control system, which is the Pitham C type, just to get my damage up. Uh, running hot as well, the damage is quite phenomenal now, and the application across most ships is quite good the combat rigs i've got a 15 percent damage bonus rig to missiles i have a 10 percent bonus to the reduction of the activation time and i have a 25 percent bonus to my shield boost amount and in the engineering rigs i have nothing special i have a um, auxiliary thrusters to boost by 10 percent i've got two prototype capacitor rigs as I'm already cap stable and this just helps me uh, get over the line. I am considering changing these rigs so I've got one power grid rig to boost enough to be able to use a large shield booster and then have a better cap recharge rig which I think I'd still be cap stable with. The main problem with that is torpedoes use quite a lot of power grid and I'd have to reduce the number of those and go back to using more rapids or to use some medium missile launchers which are now also very effective that would be uh, another option of what you could do however you would be fighting more at range if you were running a storyline mission or any other type of mission that was particularly difficult and there was a station in the system there's always an option for you to take some modules in your cargo hold and equip to do ro what's required to get the most out of the mission if you want to sit back and have an overall fit Give this one a try i'm not saying this is the best fit everybody has their own play style but since i've moved away from exclusively using rapids i've found this to be very very effective and if we have a look at the missions i've picked up a end of storyline mission for a modern world which is the circular one at the top there this used to be i think three or four million isk it's now up to seven and a half million isk and some of the missions before that were let's say 90,000 disc have jumped up to 500,000 disc and I'm doing the advanced missions. So I'm going to take this ship out and just show you how well this much DPS does without using rapid launches exclusively and how quickly we can take on this 7 million isk mission using my 835 DPS cold and just see how well that does against a, a variety of different ships.
I'm going to warp in at zero, just checking my overview. I've got my auto orbit turned on. I'm going to set my orbit to 10 kilometers, let's say. Bearing in mind that Nosferatu's range has been buffed, I now have a 10 kilometer range with a 5 kilometer fall off. Just landing now, let's see what we have on the first wave of this mission. We've only got four ships, so I'm going to get these locked down. As a tip, with the way um, PVE is now set with all the E-War, best to have your overview open, look at your ships, and see which one starts to use the E-War. So we can see here, it's the Hacker Celestis. So I'm gonna try and take this guy out first, as he will be reducing my scan resolution and we're going to fire a volley I've got my target painter running and I'm going to turn on my damage module and we can see my hot DPS has jumped up to 1064 which is quite considerable and although this is a cruiser a smaller size ship to my battle cruiser he's taking significant damage and I would say he's going down pretty quickly about the same speed as a ship would have done pre-nerf with using all rapid medium launchers. I'm going to take out this next Celestis and get this guy down. And again, if you can see the damage there as it hits, because it's a split damage system, you can see all three damage types as they hit. So my volley damage seems to be greater against a cruiser than it was with using all rapid. So for everybody that's way upset and still raging about the changes to rapids it's not the end of the world and you can try something different and you might find you have a better result and a, a different outcome albeit you have to adjust your playstyle ever so slightly also when you're running missions you need to realize that the different factions have different e-war so at the moment we're fighting against galante and they have the sensor dampeners which make it impossible for you to lock onto frigates. If a Celestis were to hit you with their sensor dampeners it could take you up to 30-40 seconds to lock down a frigate which is an incredibly long time in combat. So the best advice against Galante is when you land on the field immediately try to lock down as, as many ships as you can especially the frigates and if you're fighting against Kaldari probably not the most advisable thing to do as they have missile guidance uh, jammers which will reduce your explosion and uh, velocity and radius and make your missiles far less effective so I think as a rule of thumb from now on because I'm using a missile boat I'll try to steer clear more of the Kaldari missions. The second wave here has just spawned we've got uh, five ships and I can see that the Hacker Celestis again is using the Ewar, so I'm going to follow the same process and lock this guy down first. And you can see with his dampener that was over a 10 second lock time. So we've talked about Galante and Kaldari. We've also got Mimitar who are using target painters. So if you're fighting against Mimitar ships and you're in a smaller ship like a cruiser, a lot of people are using Phantasms and Cinnaballs or even destroyers frigates if you're using a ship that benefits more from a speed tank you might want to steer clear from the Mimitar missions as your sig radius will be vastly boosted especially if you've got multiple e-war modules on you and amar still remain the devil in my opinion any shield based ship has a very difficult time tanking them and if you're using turrets if you're using rails or cannon definitely one to avoid as they will all have tracking disruptors as i progress through this mission you can see that nothing's really posing too much of a threat i've got a good amount of capacitor i'm not having to shield boost a, a great deal i've got my shield booster on at the moment just because i'm pretty cap stable and it's more lazy mode and the ships themselves are going down relatively quickly. There are more ships on these missions now, so that means there's more bounty. 
the actual mission rewards have increased so there may be some more casual players that don't want to spend hours and hours running story missions but do want to make some isk so the advanced or, or the hard uh, up and coming missions will be giving a lot more risk. I'm quite keen to see what will happen when the when we all hit tier 8. For me that's coming up very very soon and we move from advanced news missions to the hard news missions. The difference between normal and advanced was 40k to 400k so again I'm very curious to see what will happen there attacking this um, Myrmidon now but I can see I've got some uh, asteroid belts here on my overview so I think I'll just get that sorted and have those removed there's a few videos up on YouTube about how to make a customized overview uh, very very much recommend watching those the custom overviews are very handy for PvP specifically and uh, being able to do different things. You can also save it and swap between the default standard overview and the custom one. So this Myrmidon is going down uh, really quite fast actually. If I was using All Rapids before the patch I would be doing less damage at this stage, um, a, a fair bit less damage as I think I was up to about 650 DPS with a, a full set of uh, Kaldari Navy Rapids. So we've got another wave that's spawned here. There's more ships. Let's see what happens with the E-War. Again, we've got a Hacker Celestis, which is using the E-War on this group. I've just fast forwarded a bit to get towards the end of this wave, as we've already seen on the first two waves, what we're really capable of here. We do have a different ship in this wave, an Executor, which I've not had a look at yet, but I've heard that the Executors may be remote repairing or remote shield boosting other ships. So let's take a look and see what this guy's doing at the moment. Are they right? Well, there we go. Interestingly, you can see the repair beam that's hitting the Myrmidon, and it would appear as if the Executor is orbiting yeah there we go you can see the executor is remote repairing his buddies and he's also orbiting them so the executors and ospreys and any other type of ship that we know is a um, remote repairing ship need to be taken down as primaries otherwise the whole time you're attacking and targeting the other ships they'll be getting repaired We have the final wave here now which has a lot more ships. We've got an elite hacker who is using some E-War. There's a stasis weber fire and a sensor dampener on me now so I'm trying to lock him down but it's taking forever. I'd always try to focus on the elites first but here you can see looking at the overview we've got a scrambler on the Algos so if you're in a ship that's not having the best tank perhaps you're a newer player using a cruiser of some kind it would be advisable that you always checked your overview and targeted the ships that are preventing your warp first just in case you need to scamper off and, and repair i'm going to speed the video up a bit now and uh, show you how we get through this wave but at no point using this particular ship on this 7 million isk mission am I in any kind of danger. Seem to be tanking it pretty easily and taking them out fairly quickly. I believe it took me around 15 minutes in total to run this 7 million isk mission whilst um, doing some talking uh, along the way. And it's not to go without saying that storyline mission would be far far more difficult i'm going to do some new complete walkthrough guides of all of the different storyline missions and i've been told that on the new section there are some missions on the advanced setting which go up to 15 million isk and have a particularly difficult last wave so again be very careful there i hope that this video has potentially helped uh, everybody to understand this fitting 
seems to be working well. I'd like to try this in the storyline missions and see how we get on. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.